So this is an infrared um, detector module, which you can get from eBay or from some electronic suppliers. And they're ideal for use with the Raspberry Pi because uh, they've only got three pins. So one's a five volt supply, one's a signal, which is the output um, when, when it detects movement. And uh, the other one's a ground uh, supply. And the signals, uh, which is the output, is output in 3.3 3 volts. So it's ideal for Raspberry Pi because you don't need any uh, inter intermediate components um, to use it. Uh, and this, when I got mine, uh, this cap was, uh, these caps weren't on, on them. Uh, they seem to, for some reason they shipped them without the cap on, but all you have to do is put the cap on top, but it shows you on top here, uh, VCC out and ground, so you can identify the pins on there, but they just, the caps just slot on top. And on the back there's a few adjustments, so you've got a jumper here, so on the position where it's on the outside of the board that triggers once which means that when it triggers it the internal timer sets off and it waits for about five seconds it's adjustable uh, whereas if it's on the inside uh, the outside um, position over here um, it will repeatedly trigger so the timer so every time it triggers the timer keeps getting reset so if there's a lot of movement around then it could stay switched on for like a minute or so you know however long the movement's going for whereas on the outside it will trigger for five seconds or whatever you set it to uh, and then then uh, stop triggering and so on the side here there's a sensitivity adjustment so uh, they say that it goes from like 30 centimeters to seven meters i think it's in the document uh, and the other one is uh, time delay so when it gets triggered you can adjust it from uh, being a high signal from five seconds to I think it was several minutes. I can't can't remember exactly what what the figure was, but if you set the ideal uh, thing for the Raspberry Pi is if you set it to to the minimum time, which is about five seconds. So you have to wait five seconds be between triggering it uh, and the most sensitive um, setting, which is um, seven meters. So I'm going to wire this up on, on this breadboard here. And I've got a little connector extension um, because the capacitors would stop it plugging into the breadboard. So I'll put that on top of the connector and then I can plug it into the breadboard there. Um, and I've got from the Raspberry Pi a ground rail, a uh, five volt rail and a three volt free rail. We don't need the three volt free rail for today but um, the five volt will, is what we'll power it with. And this is the GPI pin um, for for the Raspberry Pi, so I'll put that to the middle pin, and the first one is the ground pin. It's important to get it right way around because you could damage something if you don't. Uh, so I'll put that down to the ground rail, and then from the five volt rail, power it up. So on the Raspberry Pi I've got a program which is in Python. I'll just run through the, the lines. It's a very simple uh, I.O. program. Um, so at the top line um, I have this line which just tells the operating system if you run it from the command line it knows to automatically run it using Python. Um, and then we import the libraries we need. So I'm using sys because I'm going to use a key press on the, on the um, computer to exit uh, the program. Uh, I'm using time and ti date time because when I output a trigger event, I'm going to just put uh, the ti date and time at which the trigger event happened. And the Raspberry Pi GPIO is because I'm interfacing with uh, with this on the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. So the first line come to is a user definable line. So I'm using GPIO pin 14, but um, this is if you just change this to the pin that you're using, and this program should work. And that's the only um, variable in, in you know, thing that you can set in the in the program. Uh, so coming down, we get the first procedure, which is setting up the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. So I set the mode to BCM, which means that pin 14 is the GPIO number, not the actual pin number on the board. So uh, it's easier to refer to it as the as the GPIO number. Uh, and then I set up the pin, which is the pin 14. Uh, I set up for input um, and I, I use a pull up resistor on it. I don't think it needs the pull up, but it doesn't matter. You might as well just set it up. Um, and 
then uh, we can set up on the next line uh, an event. So on the GPI pin, on the rising edge, uh, call this uh, function which is input callback. And the bounce time means that sometimes when you get I.O. devices uh, for input, uh, they can sometimes like spark or, you know, they, so when you're touching the terminal, it doesn't quite, you know, it'll, it'll repeatedly uh, touch. So this means that for every 200 milliseconds, it'll only accept one input. Uh, and so then we come down to the GPIO uh, routine where it captures the, the event, so input callback. I just get current date and time from the system and then I print it, print the date and time and then also the GPI pin which was uh, triggered and that's all the, that's all the program does uh, so the last bit of the program um, which is the main loop so I call the init GPI routine which we defined above I set the value key to zero and I'm saying while the key value is zero just keep going around in this loop and it will sleep for one second and then it will get the current key value so all this all this does this particular loop is it just goes around in circles doing nothing and just waiting for for this input callback event to to trigger uh, and then if the key value isn't zero so if it was uh, read the key from here and it, it was no longer a no key no key being pressed then it'll fall out of the loop and it just does the Raspberry Pi GPI cleanup there so what I'll do in the command line just below, I'll run the run the application. It's just sitting in a loop now. Uh, it, it probably takes a few seconds to initialize the device, uh, but then if I move my hand over, it should be ready now. I think it should yeah it triggers the, the the device there, and then it says a minimum time of five seconds if you've got the variable resistor turned right down. Uh, but it might be a few more seconds. I think it might be 10 seconds in this case. I'm not sure. But so if I move my hand over it again now, it should trigger again. So there you go. Uh, and then so it won't trigger straight away because it, it has that delay time. But um, if I wait another 10 seconds or so, it'll be ready for me to move my hand over. Oh, I, must have, I must have moved myself then. Uh, I'll wait again and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll trigger it again with my hand. Okay, now. Yeah, so... It triggers quite quite reasonably okay. Um, I'm sitting right next to it, so that uh, so I might be triggering it myself by moving my body around. But um, but that's that's the program.